On February 22, 1940, six German destroyers were sent out to intercept British fishing boats in the North Sea. The Germans were suspicious that some British fishing ships were being used for military operations and planned to put a stop to whatever it was they were up to. The mission was dubbed Operation Vikinga, or in English, Operation Viking, and would become one of Germany's greatest military disasters of the entire war. From ancient times, mankind has yearned to master the seas both for trade and for warfare. As centuries passed, we learned and adapted our seafaring vessels to be stronger and more well-equipped to face off against anything they could encounter. From the ships of the line during the Age of Sail to modern nuclear submarines, this is Sails and Salvos. This video has been sponsored by Exter. Stay tuned until the end of the video to learn more about why you need to get yourself one of their smart wallets. First though, let's get into today's topic. The flotilla sent to the North Sea that day was composed of three Type 1934 class destroyers, Z1 Liebrich Maas, Z3 Max Schultz, Z4 Richard Bietzen, and three Type 1934A class destroyers, Z6 Theodor Riedel, Z13 Erik Kollner, and Z16 Friedrich Eckholt. This was almost a third of Germany's destroyers at the time, and they were relatively large fleet destroyers at over a 2,000 ton displacement. These ships were considered individually stronger than Britain's interwar destroyers in single combat and had a combined weight higher than any single British cruiser. Of these six destroyers, only four would be returning home from the operation. For simplicity, I will be referring to the ships by their number for the majority of this video. The Luftwaffe had been ordered to provide a fighter escort to the destroyers as they returned. However, the message never arrived, as the Kriegsmarine and Luftwaffe generally had poor communications. This was partly due to Hermann Goering's efforts to keep aircraft under the Luftwaffe's direct control rather than allowing them to work under the Kriegsmarine, along with the two branches constantly competing for funding. This led to difficulty coordinating between the two branches. At the time of Operation Vikinga, two Heinkel 111 bombers were patrolling over the North Sea scouting for enemy shipping vessels. With neither side being aware of the other's presence, disaster was imminent. At 1913 hours, lookouts aboard Z-16 noticed the sound of a two-engine aircraft. It passed over their formation, neither acting aggressively nor providing identification. A few minutes later, the aircraft came back, flying over the formation again. Z-4 and Z-13's crews assumed the plane must be hostile and opened up on it with 20mm anti-aircraft fire. This resulted in the bomber firing back with its own machine guns. This engagement left little doubt as to if the aircraft was hostile and the destroyer crews prepared to engage if the plane came back around. At 1943 hours, Z-3 detected the bomber coming from the rear. Two 50kg bombs impacted into the water behind Z-1, resulting in all six destroyers opening fire on the unknown aircraft. A third 50kg bomb hit Z-1 between the bridge and the foremost funnel, causing the ship to break formation and signal the rest of the flotilla for assistance. Then, at 1956, Z-1's anti-aircraft guns opened fire again. Moments later, two more explosions occurred, one behind the ship and the other at the rear funnel. Following this, a huge plume of fire shot up and out of the ship. When the smoke finally cleared, Z-1 was revealed to be split straight down the middle. With its 330 crew aboard, the ship began sinking into the icy North Sea waters. After this attack, the unidentified aircraft flew away and towards England. The five remaining destroyers went towards Z-1's sinking wreck, attempting to launch boats to save survivors. At 20.04, there was a second large explosion. Z-16 reported that it was another attack from the air, while Z-6 reported that an enemy submarine was present and detected on hydrophones. Z-6 proceeded towards the perceived target, dropping four depth charges atop it. However, Z-6 was moving too slowly and accidentally damaged its rudder with charges, crippling it until the rudder was put under manual control. At 20.09, Z-13 also detected an enemy submarine. The flotilla leader put out an order to focus on hunting down the enemy submarine before attempting to rescue survivors from the wreck of Z-1. Z-3 had also stopped responding to radio communications during this time after the second explosion. As the remaining four destroyers hunted for the enemy submarine, there was constant false identifications, be it wreckage being labeled as a periscope or torpedo trails being seen in every direction. During this confusion, Z-13 accelerated to maximum speed while towing one of its boats, capsizing the smaller vessel. All hands aboard the boat were lost. By 2036, the flotilla leader put out an order to retreat. They picked up the boats that had been rescuing survivors. Most of the survivors had died from injuries or due to the extreme cold waters, and very few were saved. 
Of Z1 Liberic Mast's 330 crew, only 60 were rescued. Z3 Max Schultz, the destroyer that had been taken out by the second explosion, had lost all 308 hands in the sinking. Overall, Germany had lost 578 crew, two destroyers, and damaged a third. An inquiry into the incident was launched. Z3 Max Schultz destruction was deemed to be by detonating a sea mine. However, it was never answered as to whether this mine was German or British. Germany had placed many mines in the North Sea, but Britain had recently laid their own mines in that specific section, so it's impossible to say which of the mines it was that took down Z3. Throughout the engagement, no British forces had been present, whether it be aircraft or submarines, so all the casualties were from mines or friendly fire. No officers were held responsible, as none of them could have known what was going on. While Germany attempted to improve communication between the Kriegsmarine and Luftwaffe, the two would never quite achieve the desired coordination, though no mistake as bad as this one would take place again. Overall, Operation Vikingar is one of the worst military failures Germany experienced throughout World War II and serves as a lesson in the importance of communication. The only mistake more embarrassing than losing a third of your force to friendly fire would be to not get yourself an extra smart wallet. You're probably thinking to yourself something along the line of, why do I need some fancy wallet? I have one already and I've never had problems with it. And you're not alone because I was thinking the same thing until I started using the one they sent me. Not only does the wallet look fantastic, but it's almost half the size of my traditional wallet and can still hold all my cards I use for my normal purchases. In the top slot, you have room for 4-6 to six cards depending on their thickness, which are easily accessible through the push of a button. You can also fit a few additional cards underneath the expandable plate should you need to. For me, I needed this for my membership to the American Heritage Museum and a couple cards I use less often. Exter also offers a special solar-powered tracking device you can add to your wallet. This allows you to never feel worried about losing your wallet ever again as it can be tracked worldwide through your phone. If you ever misplace your phone or wallet, you can also use the tracker or app to call whichever you need to find. This is great for me since I have a tendency to set things down in random places, so being able to easily call my wallet or phone will cut down on the time I spend wandering around trying to remember where I left it. So go ahead and check out their entire line of smart wallets using the link down below and take advantage of Exter's summer sale going on right now to get 15% off your order. Not only are you benefiting from all the things I just mentioned, but by doing this you will be directly supporting my future content through their affiliate program. Thanks so much for watching and to Flip Stug and Thomas633 for their research and script writing. I hope to see you in my next video.